start masculinizing women, defeminizing women, and feminizing men. That, that touches everything. I mean, it touches our culture, touches our, the roles, touches radical feminism and sexuality. And so, so the parades, it describes them, and it says, it says in the parades, the men would dress up as women in the parades, mm. the women would dress as a men, it would be a parade of gender bending, and that's exactly what, when you see this happening now, that's the sign of the goddess. And Sid, it's even like more my boggling because I'm looking at this, and I look at the ancient, the ancient observers, and they said, when did this thing happen? They said it happened, even St. Jerome, it happened in the month they called it in, in Latin, Junium. June was the month of the goddess. She claimed a month, June, and she was the goddess of pride. So we have now a pride month. It's all come back. This is going to be through these things, through these festivals, she possesses a culture. And, that, and that's the sign that she has come back. Now, you say the gods are even influencing the yes. rulings of the Supreme Court, yes. and they've determined the exact timing yes. of those rulings? Yeah, this blew me away. Yes. Yeah. Since these things happened, there's been three landmark cases that have to do with gender and, you know, all, all these things, same sex and, and marriage. The first one was in 2003, had to do with legalizing. It happened in the, month, the ancient month of Tammuz. That's the lover of Ishtar. That's her month. That's her month. It happened, happened at the exact time, happened at the exact date of the goddess. The next one happened in 2013, struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. That happened same month, same exact day, month of the goddess, time of the summer solstice, all these pagan things. The last one, which struck down marriage, we all remember that. That happened month of the goddess, days of the goddess, same time, same date, June 26th. And Sid, remember, remember when marriage was changed. Remember when that happened. We all remember it. That night, all of America, rainbows appear. And one of them appears on the White House. You remember that? We all, we all remember. Well, that, the, that night on the ancient calendar, I looked this up in the Bible, was the night that is, a, is appointed, the 10th of Tammuz, appointed, appointed to cast a spell to cause a man to love a man on that day. A special edition of Tucker Carlson tonight. Happy Good Friday. This is the saddest, at the same time, by far the most hopeful day on the Christian calendar. There was a time not so long ago when the overwhelming majority of Americans observed Good Friday. They got up, they went to church, they talked about it at the office and at dinner that night. It was part of their culture. That's no longer true. Tonight, you wonder how many Americans even know it's Good Friday. So after hundreds of years, this has finally become a non-Christian country. But it's not a secular country. You sometimes hear people call it that, but they are wrong. There are no secular countries. Every country has a religion because every person has a religion, even if it's atheism. Everybody worships something. We're born that way. We can't get away from it. So what is America's religion now? Well, as it happens, we have video. This is from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Fargo, North Dakota. It was taken on April 2nd. That was the first Sunday after the mass killing in Nashville, in which three adults and three children were murdered at a Christian school for being Christians. In the old America, Christian pastors would have preached about this. They would have acknowledged the evil on display, and they would have prayed for those who'd been killed. A form of that is still happening today, but the roles have been inverted. In America's new religion, the victims are not the children who died in Nashville. The victim is the woman who killed them. Because Audrey Hale called herself transgender, she was, by definition, a holy martyr. Watch this pastor in a formerly Christian church compare Audrey Hale to Jesus. Leaders were looking for any excuse, valid or not, to crucify Jesus. And they found that reason. It's baffling to me that someone's existence can be so threatening that people decide they need to be controlled, that they need to have laws made against them, or even worse, that the people that they find to be so threatening should die. So Audrey Hale's very existence as a transgender person was so threatening to authorities that they killed her, just as the Pharisees killed Jesus. Her death had nothing to do with the fact she just murdered six people. That was the pastor's sermon at St. Mark's in Fargo. So it's pretty clear that St. Mark's Lutheran Church is no longer a Christian church. So what is it now? Well, it's a transgenderist church, one of many. Transgenderism is this country's fastest growing religion. Like many faiths, 
Its theology features a supernatural transfiguration, the moment a person is transmogrified from one sex to another. Converts to this faith abandon their old lives and embrace an entirely new self. Their former identities no longer exist. They're dead names. But here's one big difference. Transgenderists do not believe in the God of monotheism. They believe that they themselves are God with the power to control nature. And if you think about it, this should be a concern because it's a recipe for extremism. 12-year-old Liam Morrison claimed at a Middleborough Public School Council meeting on April 13th that he was kicked out of class for wearing the shirt a month earlier. Hello. Good evening. My name is Liam Morrison. I live at 519 Wareham Street. I'm in the 7th, 10th grade at Nichols Middle School. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I never thought that the shirt I wore to school on March 21st would lead me to speak with you today. On that Tuesday morning, I was taken out of gym class to sit down with two adults for what turned out to be a very uncomfortable talk. I was told that people were complaining about the words on my shirt, that my shirt was making some students feel unsafe. Yes, words on a shirt made people feel unsafe. They told me that I wasn't in trouble, but it sure felt like I was. I told, I was told, that I would need to remove my shirt before I could return to class. When I nicely told them that I didn't want to do that, they called my father. Thankfully, my dad supported my, my decisions and came to pick me up. What did my shirt say? Five simple words. There are only two genders. Nothing harmful, nothing threatening. Just a statement I believe to be a fact. I have been told that my shirt was targeting a protected class. Who is this protected class? Are their feelings more important than my rights? I don't complain when I see pride flags and diversity posters hung throughout the school. Do you know why? Because others have a right to their beliefs just as I do. No one person, staff, or student told me that they were bothered by what I was wearing. Actually, just the opposite. Several kids told me that they supported my actions and that they wanted one too. I experienced, wait a no. I was told that the shirt was a disruption to learning. No one got up and stormed out of class. No one burst into tears. I'm sure I would have noticed if they had. I experienced disruptions to my learning every day. Kids acting out in class are a disruption, yet nothing is done. Why do the rules apply to one, yet not another? I feel like these adults were telling me that it wasn't okay for me to have an opposing view. Their arguments were weak, in my opinion. I didn't go to school that day to hurt feelings or cause trouble. I have learned a lot from this experience. I learned that a lot of other students share my view. I learned that adults don't always do the right thing or make the right decisions. I know that I have a right to wear those five, a shirt with those five words. Even at 12 years old, I have my own political opinions, and I have a right to express those opinions. Even at school, this right is called the First Amendment to the Constitution. My hope in being here tonight is to bring the school committee's attention to this issue. I hope that you will speak up for the rest of us so we can express ourselves without being pulled out of class. Next time, it may not only be me. There might be more students that decide to speak out. Thank you for your time and good night. How do you think he handled the situation? Do you agree with what Liam said? The parameters of gender 